Thank you, Mr. Chang. Now let me introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Alan Zeman, to all of you. Dr. Zeman is the chairman of Lan Kwai Fong Group and the chairman of Ocean Park Corporation. In 1983, he opened his first restaurant in Lan Kwai Fong, and now he owns 65% of this district's properties. May I now invite the father of Lan Kwai Fong, Dr. Zeman, to come onto the stage and share about his advices to young Hong Kong entrepreneurs. Dr. Zeman, please. Thank you. Uh, it's indeed a real pleasure to be here today, especially uh, giving my first speech in Lang Kwai Fong, actually my second speech in Lang Kwai Fong, <laughs> especially in the Hard Rock Cafe. This is the right kind of place for startup entrepreneurs. Um, and I'm not sure if everyone in this room is a startup entrepreneur, but uh, uh, my story is uh, uh, one of kind of a, a movie <laughs> Uh, uh, story. I, I started uh, in Montreal, Canada um, at a very young age. My dad died when I was seven years old and I started working when I was ten um, because I came from a very moderate family and uh, I started delivering newspapers. I was earning 35 Canadian dollars a week delivering newspapers in the morning before I went to school and at 12 I decided to uh, get a job also in weekends in a restaurant like this, cleaning tables, and uh, as a busboy on Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday. And so I, I was earning another $25 a week uh, on the weekends, including tips. And totally, I was earning about $60 a week. My teachers were earning like $30 a week. So at 12 years old, I was earning way more than my teachers were earning. And uh, so, that's when the entrepreneurial spirit really started in my blood. I had to taste the money. My friends were getting a dollar allowance from their parents, and uh, I wasn't paying tax because I was uh, too young, actually, to be working. In those years, there was no such thing as computers, and so when I got the job at 12, I told them I was 16 years old. Um, and and uh, from there, when I was 16 years old, I was the only one in secondary school and high school that had his own car. I bought my own car. My teachers couldn't afford a car. Of course, I was the most popular with all the girls in the school, <laughs> which was very important to me. Um, but, uh, you know, I learned at a very young age to be very entrepreneurial. When I graduated from high school, um, I was in what they call the brain class, although I never used to study. And I tell the university students, I kind of used my brain, I used to write exams from using common logic. Always thinking uh, world class. Uh, and and, and in, in some of the things that I learned in starting out, I started my first business when I was 19 years old. I started in the fashion business when I was 16 when I left school. And uh, at the age of 19, I decided that I want to start my own business in Montreal. And that's what brought me to Hong Kong. Because I thought, if someone else can do it, why can't I? We all come from the same place. We all wind up in the same place. Death is the great equalizer. But if somebody else can do it, can start their own business, what's wrong with me? I came from the same place <laughs> as, as, as Li ka -shing. <laughs> And so, why not? And uh, at the age of 19, I came to Hong Kong. Uh, I started to import ladies' sweaters uh, from Hong Kong into Canada. And at the end of my first year in business, I'd made a million US profit at 19. I thought, wow, I'm rich. <laughs> and so I sat down with the accounts at the end of the year. I said, I have a check for a million. They said, not so fast. I said, why? You gotta pay tax. I said, tax, how much? In Canada, it was 50%. I said, 50%? You're kidding. Who gets the tax? It says, socialized medicine, socialized this, socialized that. Someone has to pay for it. So now I'm figuring half a million is still a lot of money to a 19-year-old. And so I thought to myself, uh, half a million, uh, I'll have a check for half a million. The accountant said, not so fast. Why? You got to pay tax. I just paid tax. That was a corporation. If you want personal tax, you got to declare a dividend. And at a lesser rate, I wound up with around 400000 out of my million, which was still a lot of money to a 19-year-old. I came to Hong Kong uh, on a buying trip, 
And I said at that time, Swire was my buying office. And I said, what's the tax in Hong Kong? They told me 15%. I said, 15%? You're kidding. A bright light went off in my head. How many years am I going to make a million? I can work less, put more in my pocket. I don't have to work so much for the government. I mean, today I'm working harder for the Hong Kong government than, <laughs> than I expected, but uh, for free. But uh, in essence, I came to Hong Kong. The thing I loved about Hong Kong when I stepped off the airplane 45 years, or more than 45 years ago, was the can-do spirit in Hong Kong, the positive spirit. Hong Kong, you guys are lucky. You're all young in this room, including you. Um, yes. <laughs> and so we're, and everybody is starting out. If you have that can-do, that positive spirit that Hong Kong always used to have, everyone could start from nothing and become Ali Kashing or some of the other names that we've said. Uh, because in Hong Kong, we service the world. The thing I found the difference between Hong Kong and Canada was uh, in, in Montreal, I was servicing a local market. In Hong Kong, the beauty of Hong Kong has always been an international city, doing business with the world. And that, for me, was something that was very, very important. Because I learned in my world, I always think about first class. Whatever you do, you want to be the best. Any product that you're going to bring out, you want to be the best. There's so much competition around. What I always do is always look at what's the competition? What's the product that they're offering? How can I be different? In my world, I always aim for first class. If I aim for first class, you get to business class. If you aim for business class, you'll get to economy. If you aim for economy, you'll go broke. So set your, your goal, set your ideas high. Be number one, be the best. Think that you want to do business with the world, not just a little district or a small group of people. Any product you're bringing out should be scalable, should be able to compete with the rest of the world. And look at the product. Any product I always bring out, whether it's Lang Kwai Fong, whether it's Ocean Park, I always try to be a little bit different. I see what the norm is and then think out of the box. Make it better than the norm. Give it that little twist. It's a style. It's a style that I learned growing up in the fashion business for 35 years. In the fashion business, people are very gullible. You learn about people's tastes. People always, fashion is all about change. We, we, produce, we used to produce six lines a year so that you can tell people that, you can tell men that the tie that they're wearing is too, is too wide, thin ties are in now, so you gotta get rid of your, your wide ties. Females, the hemlines are below the knee or above the knee. The more you keep changing your product, the more you can get uh, uh, people to buy. And so any product you're doing, always change. The other thing that uh, you know, most of the people in this room obviously are IT-centric. And, and the future of the world, as we, as we know, is IT. The person I probably respect most in my life that really changed the modern world is the late Steve Jobs. Uh, he took a dumb phone, like an Apple phone, dumb company, graphically made it look cool, gave it, as we see, gave it a, a, a nice casing. They all, all telephones tell the same thing. They all do the same job. You dial the number and you talk. He gave it the extra features. He made it different. He made people, he made it user friendly. Whatever product you, you want to bring out, make sure it's easy to use. It has to be user friendly. The most important thing is that everybody can buy into it, that people really understand it. When I originally, when I first came to Hong Kong, um, uh, my, my story was Lang Kwai Fong. Um, I was in the fashion business. I was working around the world, uh, um, exporting different uh, garments around the world. But the thing I realized, the most important thing when you're starting out is to 
build a strong team around you. No one person that I know is that clever. I've met many famous people around the world. Build a strong team. Speak to yourself. Understand your strengths and weaknesses. Some people are terrible in finance, but they're good in other, other uh, uh, in marketing. Some people are terrible in marketing, great in finance. Understand what you're good at. Build a team around you. As a leader, the thing I, I realized, the most important thing is to have a vision. I always say in my world, there's no bad staff. There's bad bosses. Because staff come to work every day wanting to do their job, wanting to know what's expected of me. As a boss of your company, what you want to do is paint a picture so everyone in the company knows where this company is going to be the next three years from now, the next five years from now. Where's this company going? What's, what's, and, and so staff comes to work wanting to understand what, what's expected of them. Always be open-minded. I listen to everyone. Never be narrow-minded, never be closed-minded. Become approachable. As a boss in my company, I've never had my own office. I'm with all the staff. I want to understand what is going on. I want them to be inspired. The most important thing, many of the staff, when I say great companies build strong, with, have great leadership with strong people around them, and I usually compare it to a sports team. If you look at a World Cup, usually the team that has all the superstars is not necessarily the one that's going to win the game. The one that's going to win the game is, is the team that has a strong coach with great utility players in each position. And they, working together as a team, will be able to overcome the team with all the superstars that want to play individually. And so it's no different in a startup company. Be positive. It's not easy, especially in Hong Kong, to start up a company. I understand the difficulties. Even when I was starting Lan Kwai Fong, it wasn't easy. Prices in those years, not as high as today, but the, the buildings were still, rents were still very expensive. Hong Kong has always been an expensive place. But the thing that you, you, you have to be innovative. Always be innovative. Always think out of the box. The most important thing, build an overhead that's small. Put a package together. You want to, as startups, you want to attract investors need money to start up. You need people who believe in your product. And it's very important by packaging the, the product. You might understand, I've had many people come to me, young guys like yourself, who want finance to start up a company or to have a product. But it's not there yet. You've got to make sure that the whole package is right. From the marketing aspect, what, when you're trying to get an investor in, it's really important that the product looks professional. It looks like you're already in business for many, many, many years. So that when people come in, I always think of myself, when I'm creating a product or bringing a product out, I never think of myself as the boss. I always think of myself as the customer. Look at things, be critical of your product. Look at things through customers' eyes. Would I accept this? Would I buy this? Look from the other side. Because otherwise, you become arrogant. And it's really, really important. Test it. Test it with friends. And be open-minded. Don't argue. If it's not right, don't try and tell everybody it's right. Unless you really, really believe in your product. And then see what else there is around that's like it. Then you have a chance. Then the most important thing is to put a business plan together. A business plan that makes sense. Not overly aggressive. I've always said it's important that you crawl before you walk. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. For me, 
the most important thing is I always make a decision. Don't procrastinate. I have one saying in, my, in all my businesses, I always try to stay ahead of the curve. At the end of every day, I answer every me email. I get hundreds of emails a day. I always stay ahead of it. Because if you stay ahead of the curve, ahead of it, you won't panic. When you start panicking, when you fall behind, you've got so much to do, you fall behind. You start to panic, and then you don't make the right decision. So always, at the end of every day, clean everything. Make sure everything is right. And it's possible for everyone in this room to, to be successful. If you have that positive experience, when I first took over Ocean Park, which is a subject that's very dear to my heart, Disney was coming to Hong Kong. Everybody was worried about, uh, the government was worried about uh, uh, Disney. People were saying, close the park. The government didn't, do, didn't know what to do with it. Mr. Tung, at that time, the chief executive, called me and asked me to come and uh, give them advice on what to do with the park. I'd never been to the park. I told him he's crazy because I know nothing about theme parks. But even not knowing anything about theme parks, he was very persistent. He called me six times. By the sixth time, I figured I'll give him face. I went over to uh, the park, and uh, I, I decided to... Uh, I, you know, I look at things through different eyes. When I first came there, the park was falling apart. The pavement was, was, was broken. The paint was peeling. Not knowing anything about uh, running a theme park, I thought as a customer, I thought this park looks like it's going out of business. Do I, can, if I was a customer, would I come back to here? No. The food was unedible at the time. <laughs> And I thought to myself, you know, not knowing anything, I just used my, my brain, common logic. So I, I, but I saw the beauty. The previous CEO was an old American guy who was retired. He said, they're losing money. The reason we're losing money is because the park uh, is on a hillside. Now, I always say, take a negative and turn it into a positive. The beauty of it being on a hillside, other parks are not on a hillside. Other parks are on flat land. And I thought, what Mother Nature gives you for free, um, I couldn't, if I move the park to flat land, I've got to build fake mountains, fake water. Mother Nature gives you everything. They have beautiful mountains there, cable car, everything's amazing. Why would I want to move it? There were suggestions to move it to Lantau next to Disney, where Disney was going to go. I said, you've got to be crazy. Because there's not enough money in the world to recreate the scene that Mother Nature gives you. And so always look at things with different eyes. And that's what I did. And then the first thing I did was I needed to build a strong management team. And so I went around the world looking for interviewing top management who had experience in the industry. And for startups, you, you do the same thing. Try to bring in people who have some experience if you're a new guy, a new kid on the block. People who will guide you in the right direction and try to learn. Because I knew, I knew nothing about theme parks. And so I, I brought in a team. We set up a management team that had, the present CEO had 27 years experience in theme park business. I could learn from him. And that's what I did. But I could lead. And so we set up the team and then we made a list. I knew that I needed a niche. Disney had a lot more money than Ocean Park. Ocean Park had virtually no money at the time. So you need to create a niche. Like your startup, you need to create a niche. And so I made a list. On one side, I put uh, Disney's name. On the other side, I put Ocean Park. And we sat down with the staff and I said, OK, what is Disney? Disney's an American import. It's, it's, uh, and Ocean Park is local. Ocean Park has generational value. Ocean Park is about, uh, uh, has, uh, parents grew up with Ocean Park, grandparents grew up with Ocean Park, children are growing up with Ocean Park. So there's a difference right there. It's local against uh, an import. Disney is about fantasy. What they do, they're the best in the world, fantasy. Ocean Park, it's about the ocean, it's about conservation, education, all the buzzwords, conservation, all the buzzwords today that are very important, green, environment, 
And so I, I realized there's a real difference between the two. And then I realized if I go to Disney Park, it's mechanical. One day I go to the attraction, it's very good. But if I go back the next day, it's the same attraction. It won't be exciting for me. But Ocean Park, we have live animals. If I go to the panda exhibit, one day the pandas are walking, the pandas are kissing. If I go back the next day, they're fighting. The third day, they're hanging from a tree. So then I realized there's a big difference. Expect the unexpected. So I already started to find an opening. Then I thought to myself, you know, Disney is about a castle. We have live animals. And then I joke around with the press. They say, what's the difference between Disney and Ocean Park? I say, Disney has the fake mouse. We have the real mouse. <laughs> we have real animals. And so I realized that Disney's not my competitor. SeaWorld is my competitor. And so I realized that there is a, a place for both parks to exist side by side. And same in all your businesses, all your startup companies. There is a lot of space, a lot of competition in the IT world. But the world is not waiting for a new business. But they're waiting for the right business. Look for that niche. How can you be different? How can you fit in to that space? What can make you, what can make you stand out from the rest? Give people a reason to buy your product, to go to your site to keep going to your site. The future of the world, you're lucky because the industry that you're in is very competitive, but it's scalable. You're dealing with the world. In the markets that you're in, 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 in the industry that you're in, it's a totally different business because if you hit it right, you can hit it very, very big, as you've seen. Especially China, the future of the world is now IT, is now the, the high tech. I mean, and we happen to be part of China. And to be blessed to be within China, China consumer market is huge. Young people today, they're on Weibo, they're, they're in Taobao, everybody's buying you know, uh, um, th through the internet, uh, searching, surfing. It's totally changing. Media has to change. Every business in the world needs to change needs to become media, needs to become uh, user friendly over the IT. And so you're, you're in a space that's very, very, very important. I know I've tried to condense my speech because I know I've only had a short 20 minutes, but uh, basically all I want to say to you is that you, I hope you can learn a few lessons that I've tried to give you from my experience is by being positive, by thinking out of the box, don't be afraid. Have no fear. An entrepreneur, I'll leave you with this last thing. In my world, uh, the, an entrepreneur, if there's a swimming pool, imagine a swimming pool, and most people don't know how to swim with a diving board. Most people, 95% of the population will walk to the end of the swimming pool not knowing how to swim, look down, shake their ha head, and walk back. An entrepreneur, he won't even think. He'll just run to the end of the diving board and jump in, not knowing how to swim. He'll either start paddling quickly, learning to paddle quickly, or he'll sink and drown. But the likelihood is he'll learn how to swim pretty quickly. And that's an entrepreneur. If you think too much, if you overthink, you won't do it. So as Nike says, just do it. <laughs> Have no fear. Of course, go ahead. And, and it's human nature to fear a little bit. But just think about what you want to do. Go and do it. And I promise you, Hong Kong needs very successful young entrepreneurs like yourself. You guys are the future. Looking around this room, this is exactly what Hong Kong needs. And hopefully the government, I don't know if there's any government people here today, but hopefully a Hong Kong government will hear the importance of the industry. It's not just about the financial industry, but this industry is the future, and this is the industry that can really help to save Hong Kong and, and, and keep us up there by being innovated, innovative, thinking world class. And with everyone in this room, hopefully the government will, will hear that and spend more money in helping the, the new 
companies that are starting out, giving them a chance to incubate and really graduate through incubation. Thank you very, very much.